as we have now learned about the different sales forecasting methods to make informed decisions when it comes to selling, now let us understand some more tools that can be used for crafting a strategic sales plan. Before that, just quickly revise the definition of strategic sales plan. Strategic sales plan is a portfolio of ideas, processes and technologies that guides a sales organization strategy and provides the resources and tactics for reaching sales goals. And we also discuss this process in detail, the various steps involved in designing a strategic sales plan. So after defining the objectives, we were looking at how to assess market. And in this, we have already covered different sales forecasting methods. Beyond that, there are more methods and tools available to exactly gauge the market so that we can take some more informed decisions and we can devise the sales strategy with more accuracy, uh, which is more beneficial and which is more kind of you know rewarding for a company. So here we can make use of some tools like PESTEL or STEEP analysis, SWOT and TOES analysis, catchment analysis and market mapping. So let us deep dive into these tools further and see what they exactly offer towards the benefit of a sales organization. First is PESTEL or STEEP analysis. So the STEEP analysis is also called as PESTEL analysis. It is a strategy of external environmental analysis for companies. So it lists the factors of the individual categories that may influence the unit under investigation. The unit can be a particular sales group, a unit can be a particular strategic business unit or the unit can be an entire company as well. And it is termed as one of a kind of an external audit where we are actually kind of you know sensing what external factors which are beyond control of an organization or that particular unit are affecting our efforts when it comes to selling and all. So PESTEL analysis is actually an acronym for different factors like P for political factors, E for economic factors, S for social, T for technological factors, legal factors and then lastly environmental factors. A PESTEL analysis is used to analyze and monitor the macro environment factors that may have a profound impact on an organization's performance. So there is something called as an internal factors, right? An internal factors which are termed as micro environmental factors that includes our suppliers, our customers or our even retail partners as well. But when it comes to macroeconomic factors, these are the pestle factors that are has to, one has to consider. Now let us look at each of them. Political factors. So this factor determines the extent to which the government and associated politics intervene in a certain, certain industry or the economy as well. So these may include significant changes to the business environment such as new taxes and regulations that involves different trade traffic, tariffs, employment and even government regulations etc. On a large scale, whatever comes under these factors like policy frameworks, labor market policies, government policies competition oversight, legislation, political stability of the country or even an economy, tax policies that are available there, trade barriers, security requirements and subsidies also. So all these factors can be put under the umbrella of political factors that can affect any operations of any business or unit. Coming to the economic factors. When, when making important strategic marketing decisions, the business needs to consider the influence of the economy may have on the firm's ability to sell its products and services. Economic factors include economic growth that we usually talk about GDP and all, interest rates, exchange rates and the inflation rate as well. These factors have major impact on how businesses operate and make decisions. For example, if you want to make a more investment in your kind of you know product innovation and even research and development, a company needs funds. So from which are the sources from where the company can source those funds? That is again in, you know kind of affected by the rate of in interest that is available in that particular economy. For example, interest rates affect a firm's cost of capital and therefore to what extent a business grows and expands, exchange rate have its kind of you know, influence on these. So exchange rate affect the cost of exporting goods and the supply and price of imported goods in an economy as well. Going further, there are again social factors one need to consider even when you are going for a selling. 
So, cultural determinants like demographics, growth rates, health consciousness of customers, customer attitudes, etc., affect the demand for certain product or services. For example, in recent pandemic, the customer attitude towards insurance product has largely changed, right? So, these are the cultural determinants, but as well as this is something which is coming from external. So, the COVID pandemic has fundamentally changed the way consumer looks at products and services. Social factors along with these above listed factors include the social values, attitudes of customers, lifestyles, consumer trends, demographic that uh, influences income distribution as well as education of the population as well as other things like security as well. So, for example, an aging population may imply a smaller and less willing workforce, right? So, thus increasing the cost of labor to operate into that particular territory or economy. Coming to the technological factors, innovations in technology can affect the company's operations and the market in which it operates. So, technological factors include new technologies, technology effects, research development spend, new products and processes product life cycles, technology investments and even government research expenditure as well. So, furthermore, technological shifts can affect cost, quality and even it leads to innovation as well. Coming to the legal factors, regulators are becoming more powerful and the legislative burden on businesses is arguably greater than ever. You your team needs to consider the legal factors that will affect your business now and in the future. For example, if you are selling products where it needs a large amount of kind of you know, human resources to be employed, you need to abide by the laws of the land related to employment as well as labor policies. This could be anything from data protection regulations through to employment legislations as well. Coming to the last that is environmental factors that affect business activities. Environmental factors include ecological and environmental aspects such as weather, climate and climate change which may especially affect industries such as tourism, farming and insurance. Furthermore, growing awareness of the potential impact of climate change is affecting how companies operate and the products they offer, both creating new markets and as well as diminishing the destroying existing markets as well. Environmental factors include materials, resources, access to those resources, disposal, emission norms and regulations, energy policies, transport routes available, life cycle and global warming also. Now here are some examples how to do, how to apply this pastel or steep analysis for the same. These are some examples for Nike, it is one of the international brand in sports category. If you look at the political factor, it must consider the taxation laws and mandatory rules of each country where it, where, it, where it is operating and it must follow import export law as well. Coming to economic factors that affect Nike's businesses, Nike must target customers with good purchasing power right? and developing countries may be good opportunity for Nike because there is a continuous growth that is happening across customer segments in those developing countries. Social factor. Nike needs to target health conscious people or athlete for that say. Shoes and apple must be for health conscious people along with sporty people as well. So, they need to target the different sentiments that are happening or arising within a particular customer population. Technological factors. Nike uses finest technology and it should continue to do that. It constantly changes technology whenever there is a new opportunity or threat arises from those kind of technological innovations. Coming to legal factor, it must consider the copyrights and designs of shoes and appeal apparel it produ produces as well as it must obey health and safety rules as well as they are coming up with product that are targeted to those health conscious people. And environmental factor, Nike need to come up with environment friendly products as well that has a long sustainable value for customers who are using it. Change the brand. Look at Uber, which provides kind of you know ride sharing kind of an app. A political factor for Uber might be is to need its need to make it stand clear about diverse in, drivers insurance policies, have to follow minimum wages rules which are prescribed by the particular political 
kind of you know stability and the concerning laws that are coming from that particular ruling party have to have deal with bans in many countries as well so that's again a different political factor economic factors for uber includes easily accessible services affordable fare charges and it's continuously should offer job opportunities but pay may not be convincing as well so these are the some economic factors that might hamper operations of uber coming to social factors uber has to have a user friendly app uh, it has to offer a quick pickups and also gives better ride experience than taxis which are available in most of the developing countries coming to technological factor excellent mobile app for users is something which is very much important for uber using social media and other electronic media well for promotion is another technological factor that drives engagement with uber services legal factor here includes a need to prevent ban in many countries owing to some allegations related to kind of you know different cases that have been filed need to follow labor and employee safety laws as well and copyright laws need to be looked at as well and coming to the final one that is environmental factors that might affect uber's operations is fuel usage may increase in future right so they need to identify alternative sources of fuel or kind of you know renewable sources of energy that can run their cars and taxis and then traffic congestion is a concern as well right so these are the environmental factors for which uber needs to take a call by helping you so why why this pastel analysis is important the pastel analysis helps you to understand how external factors affect businesses right they can help you in multiple ways first they help you determine the long term effect on the performance and activities of your business so that you can you can plan very well for your future then they can this pastel analysis can help you review any strategies you have in place that whether it will be okay to go ahead with the same strategies in future it helps you this analysis helps you to work out a new direction product or plan for your business it can also help you identify solutions to problems that you are facing and then gain strategic advantage on competitors as well and finally it helps you to evaluate the risks associated with markets you are interested in so that's all about the pestle analysis coming to swot or toes analysis so swot is an acronym for four words strength weakness opportunities and threats management must make a realistic and objective approval of internal company strength and weaknesses in the context of potential external opportunities and threats <clears throat> opportunities for the future of a business and threats to st it stem primarily from factors outside the direct control of a company so what are the external factors that may affect your business or even sales operations are something which is where you don't have a control on it in particular like from you know trends and changes in those factors in those external factors were referred to the earlier as a macro environment namely pestel so we know all the external factors that may affect or influence business practices that is pestel factors and with relation to that what kind of strength and weaknesses your business unit have so that's where we use swot analysis <clears throat> so here strength and weaknesses are within organization factors whereas opportunities and threats are outside the organization strength usually talks about what do you do better than your competitors what are you good at right with compared to your competitors what are the strengths you have weaknesses is where do you need to improve the improvement areas for your business opportunities are what are your chances in the future you know what chances you look in the future that your business can embark upon and then threats is something which is you know what obstacles do you face to achieve those opportunities in future so strength these are the things your company does well as compared to your competitors these are the qualities that separate you from your competitors these are something which is very internal to your organization or unit which is called as a, these are internal resources for example you might have a skilled professional sales professional with you so that skilled sales professional or sales person is nothing but your strength and then tangible assets such as intellectual property capital proper capital proprietary technologies and all that also sometimes gives you a strength in terms of 
how you compare with your competitors. Things, weaknesses are things your company lacks, you know, you need to build on these weaknesses. Things your competitors do better than you. And these are something sometimes, these are sometimes are the resource limitations, whereas sometimes having an unclear unique selling proposition becomes a weakness as well. Coming to opportunities, for example, undeserved markets for specific products can be an opportunity. Right? You have not yet explored that market for your product, but yes, your product has that potential to appeal to those kind of customer bases, then that becomes your opportunity. Sometimes a company may have few competitors in your area, so that becomes one of the opportunity for company to capitalize on. Emerging need for your products or services, that is again one of the opportunity one can go for. And even press media coverage of your company can again give you an opportunity to reach out to larger audience, you know, reaching out to masses, take your products and services to them and explore that market potential as well. Coming to threats, these are like, might be sometimes these are emerging competitors for your company. There might be some changing regulatory environment that can be a threat for you or your company. Negative press or media coverage sometimes hampers company's image and brand value. So, that sometimes becomes a threat and even changing customer attitudes toward your company. If something goes bad, you know, the incident that kind of, you know, raised eyeballs of all the customers across the globe or country, that is not something which you aspire for. So, it becomes a threat for you if something goes wrong and it is not manageable. So, and the SWOT analysis actually lists down all these things that you can do with respect to a particular business unit or business operations. And this has to be a continuous process. Now, let us look at each of these uh, factors or ingredients in detail. First is strength. So, these are areas in which the organization is better and outdoes the competitors. Some examples we can say here are like a brand recognition. Your brand has a more brand recall when it is placed vis-a-vis -vis your competitor's brand. A loyal customer base is again one of the strength any company can has or have. Unique proprietary technology, you have patented particular technology that no one can enter in that market for the next 20 years. So, that becomes a strength for that particular business or that particular company. And a health or you know healthy financial condition that again can be a good strength so that you can very well play out with your all the four P's of your marketing because you have that kind of you know financial support to run those campaigns and get you know assist your sales team in a better way. Coming to weaknesses, these are problem areas that are not performing at optimum levels and that need improvement. So, here examples can be your um, high employee turnover, if there is so much attrition, let us say for an example of IT firms, there is so much attrition. So, that becomes a weakness for any industry or any business firm operating in IT technology and area. Poor product quality can be one of the problem areas and may become some kind of you know threat in long term as well. An unmotivated sales force, as we are talking about strategic selling plan, if your sales persons are not kind of you know enough motivated to push your products to your customers, it becomes a weakness. You might have a strong product, having a strong benefits for customers, a good solution or a very good service that you are offering. But your field executives are not able to pass on those benefits to your customers, are not able to communicate, persuade your customers in the field, then it becomes a weakness. And even lack of capital can also be sometimes become a weakness. So, you, you have to have everything is at place. You have a motivated sales people, you have a good product quality, but you do not have resources or finance to fund those kind of you know sales promotions and help your sales team in a better way. So, in those cases, even lack of capital becomes a weakness. Coming to opportunities, managers can identify better opportunities to expand and sell more of their products and services. Now, what are different kind of opportunity might be? Might be? So, it might be going into new international markets where you want to go for a market development, right? So, you are taking the same product to the new market, we call it market development, right? Maybe developing, in, developing an innovative product line itself. So, we call it as kind of you know product extensions, you are modifying your product, making it better day by day, so that it can take care of all the needs of the customers that are looking for it. 
or even exploiting weaknesses in a computer can be an opportunity. Now you have realized that you have done some analysis and all, you did pestle analysis and you find that some of your competitors are very kind of you know legally not able to handle some of kind of you know services that can be provided and you own those kind of expertises. In those cases, you can build on the weaknesses of your competitor and create a space for you. So that becomes an opportunity for your business or your selling sales team as well. Coming to threats, these are the factors that can hurt a business, right? So for example, rapidly increasing cost, new competitors in the market, tightening supply of labor, changing demographics and even more government regulations can sometimes become a threat. And some, in some cases, even companies has to have to wind up their kind of you know business from a particular economy as well. So, how to go ahead with doing the quest SWOT analysis? So, there are different questions one needs to ask to get kind of you know right kind of you know framework of SWOT analysis. So, if you want to determine strengths your business have, there are some questions you should ask yourself like, what business processes are successful? in this industry, in this domain or in this product category. What assets do you have in your team? Is it knowledge? Is it education of the workforce? Is it network? Is it skills or is it reputation that you hold? What physical assets do you have such as customers, equipment, technology, cash and even patrons as well? What competitive advantage do you have over your competition? The most fundamental thing that gives you edge over your competitors is to know that what is unique selling proposition, proposition that you are going to you know connect with your customers. Knowing weaknesses is again very important. So weaknesses are negative factors that detract from your strength. These are things that you might need to improve on a com as compared to your nearest competitor, right? So question you can ask questions like are there things that your business needs to be competitive? What business processes needs improvement? Are there tangible assets that your company needs such as maybe money or maybe some new equipments? Are there gaps on your team right? or is your location ideal for your success where you are currently standing? Are you, are you satisfied whether you are or is there some more potential for your company or your sales to grow? So finding these answers to these questions gives us more information about our weaknesses Coming to opportunities, how to locate opportunities. So opportunities are the external factors in your business environment that are likely to contribute to your success. So you can ask several questions to know what opportunities exist for your business or your unit. Is your market growing and are these trends, are there trends that will encourage people to buy more of what you are selling? So here you are talking about market growth rate. Are there upcoming events that your company may be able to take advantage of to grow the business, right? You may plan for a seasons and something like that. Are there upcoming changes to regulations that might impact your company positively, right? Or if your business is up and running, do customers think highly of you? Are you at the kind of, you know, top of the mind when it comes to your customers, when they are thinking about certain products and services? If the answer to these questions is yes, that means you have a lot of opportunities exist for your business to grow. Coming to evaluation of threats. So threats are external factors that you have no control over. So there is a no control. It will happen externally and it will impact your business and operations. You may want to consider putting in place contingency plans. So you want to be ready if something goes wrong for dealing with such out of control scenarios. So you can ask different questions like, do you have potential competitors who may enter your market? Will suppliers always be able to supply the raw materials you need at the prices which you want? Could future developments in technology change how you do business? Is consumer behavior changing the most fundamental part in a way that could negatively impact your businesses? And are there market trends that could become a threat? So you need to continuously analyze the threats in the environment, whether it's a legal, environmental or anything, to know more about what potential threat exists in near future. So this is an example of a Boots company. So Boots is a kind of, you know, drug and beauty products company in US. And this is how they can, you know, analyze their strength, weakness, opportunities and threats in detail. So for example, for a Boots, 
they have different strength in terms of the companies well established in the national marketplace in health and beauty products. The locations on high streets offer easy accessibility to existing and potential customers. The company has a good reputation also. It has well trained employees and Boots Advantage card offers one of the most generous loyalty schemes also. So, they, want, they, are, they are again kind of you know ahead in terms of retaining their loyal customers as well. So, these are something more like a strengths for Boots company. Coming to weaknesses, at Boots not all the staff have the same level of experience and training so that there is an inconsistent customer service. So, customer service has to be unique and it has to be consistent across the locations you hold across kind of you know countries that you serve or across the markets where you are present. Not all stores carry the same range and the layout of stores can be confusing to customers. So, when you walk into any McDonald's store in any part of the country, you will find the similar kind of processes, even employees following the same kind of rules, right from order taking to delivery, everything is very much standardized so as to just to not to cause any confusion to your customers. Employees are sometimes unable to be fully knowledgeable about the wide array of products and that is another weakness when it comes to Boots operations. Registration for the Advantage card is not consistently encouraged within stores. See, you have a strength that you have a best kind of you know Advantage card offer across UK, but still across stores it is not kind of you know consistently promoted to the customer. So, that is a weakness. So, there is a strength that you have the best kind of you know uh, loyalty scheme, but the weakness is that your employees are not knowledgeable enough to promote the same offer across the stores. Now, coming to opportunities, the markets for OTC medicine, medici medications like over the counter medications and health supplements are growing. Consumers are becoming increasingly more inclined to self medicate. That means, Boots has a large potential to grow into this particular segment of OTC that is over the counter medications. The pharmacist employed within the stores can offer advice on such elements as flu or even allergic reactions, where there is a no requirement initially to see to a physician, which are the over the counter medications can be you know easily subscribed or can be easily accessed based on the advice received from the local pharmacist. In some areas, it is less time consuming and more convenient to consult a pharmacist at Boots than to get an appointment to a particular doctor uh, or visiting a hospital. So, these are the opportunities exist for Boots to grow into OTC market. Now, coming to the threats that are there for Boots company. For example, supermarkets also sell OTC medicines, right? So, such as for medicines which are prescribed for vitamins or something like that. Many of Boots products are more costly than when in sold in cheaper retail outlets. That is another threat, right? So, and many of its more expensive beauty products like for example, hair dryers can be purchased more cheaply online. So, how you are going to manage your intermediaries, your distributors and retailers so as to not avoid any conflicts between them because the products are cheaply available online and customers might not want to visit a particular nearest retailer or offline store to get those products. That means, you are kind of you know hampering the growth of your partners, you are distributing partners in the process. And then in future that becomes a great kind of you know conflict and that might use a threat to your business operations as well. <clears throat> now, coming to an Indian example, let us take Flipkart. Post pandemic, how things has changed. For example, Flipkart has a strength in terms of exceptional brand recall it has experienced foundation, strategic acquisitions and partnerships. For example, it also holds kind of you know uh, major shareholding in terms of eCart, a logistic partner that it operates under it, its own and it has high volume and range of products. So, kind of you know product volume variety offered to customers is really huge. So, these are some kinds of strength the Flipkart enjoys. Coming to weaknesses, there is excessive advertisement expenses that are hampering because there is a growing competition in terms of Amazon and other online retailers. Lack of technological innovation is something is again another weakness and rapid acquisition spree. So, they are trying to buy everyone who kind of you know gives some strength to them, but that is again you have to have your weaknesses for that. Then post pandemic sentiments is another kind of an opportunity for Flipkart because people want to shop more online, they do not want to go out of their homes. 
market development is something which again an opportunity for Flipkart they can go into new markets for their existing products. Delivery excellence is something which they can aspire for. Secure and streamlined payments is another opportunity for them where they are still having some issues. Coming to the threats, there is a threat of intense rivalry with the kind of you know uh, when Amazon came to India. Now it's more kind of you know intense competition that is happening in online space with respect to e-commerce. And then buyer power is also switching, right? And the stringent government regulations that might come into the form of law that or policies that regulate online e-commerce industry. Coming to toes analysis, a toes analysis is very similar to SWOT. It just, just it's not just the reshuffling of words, but it is more than that. So while SWOT analysis puts the emphasis on the internal environment, like you know strength and weakness first. Toes forces you to look at your external environment first, your threats and opportunities. So doing this allow you to gain better understanding of the strategic choices that you face. Remember that strategy is the art of determining how you will win in business and that's why you need to have these kind of analysis as well. So Toes is again kind of you know offers you four different strategies. So to combining your external opportunities matching it with your internal strengths we call as a maxi maxi strategy where you tr your strategies you employ strategies that use strength to maximize opportunities then there is a maxi mini strategy where you want to use strengths to minimize your threats then there is a mini maxi strategy which combines internal weaknesses and external opportunities where you develop strategies that minimize weaknesses by taking advantage of opportunities and there is a mini mini strategy as well where the strategies are employed in objective to minimize weaknesses and avoid threats. For example, the maxim axis strategy. Here, what options you have as a strategic options? You can diversify into new markets, improve the quality of products or reduce the cost of top selling products as well. Coming to your mini maxi strategy where the objective is to minimize weaknesses by taking advantage of opportunities. For example, you can find new and cheaper suppliers, right? Or you can develop more aggressive marketing campaigns as well. Coming to the maxi mini strategy, you can start new product development projects to enter different markets that helps you to use your strength to minimize the threats. And then the lastly, the mini mini strategy where the objective is to minimize weaknesses and avoid threats. Here you can just close out poor selling products. You can terminate underperforming employees or salespersons as well. Developing more aggressive selling technique is another way to implement this mini mini strategy. Now coming to the next concept, which is catchment analysis. To grow your business, improve the customer experience and retain and engage your customers, you need to understand who they are and where they come from. So catchment areas or trade areas allow businesses to understand where their visitors are coming from and gain deeper insight into who they are and their behavior as well. So what is catchment area? A catchment area or a trade area is the geographic area that a business service or organization attracts its customers from. Catchment areas can be defined by distance by travel time and by mobility patterns as well, allowing you to analyze where foot traffic comes from in a variety of ways. So catchment areas are often used to better analyze foot traffic and store visit rates as well. Why it is crucial to do catchment analysis? First is to understand where your customers are coming from. So you can, so again, you can use catchment analysis to map and visualize where your customers visit your store locations from helping you understand your main service areas. Second benefit of catchment analysis is to understand the market potential and penetration. It helps you to gain a sense of what the market is like in the region you stores exist and determine how likely you are to, to be a successful business in that particular territory. Third benefit is to understand your store location coverage. It paint a clear picture of the coverage of your store locations, including gaps and overlaps, improve your own store performance and compare against your competitors business as well. Why it is crucial to do catchment analysis? Select new sites for opening and existing ones for closing. So you can also determine or find out which of your stores are performing very well 
and which stores are not kind of you know giving any kind of revenue to you and that can be closed in a near future. So catchment analysis helps you identify the best sites for a new potential store that you want to open and which one would you be the best to close based on the actual store performance. It also helps you to determine which locations are performing the best. So you can use analytics to improve the performance of individual store and your entire network, identify the best stores to expand or remove and how to better reach out to your target customers. It also helps you to understand your customer consumers travel network. So this, you can leverage this to know exactly where your customers travel in your trade area and enhance your customer experience for them in the process. This will also help you to improve marketing outreach and customer targeting campaigns. The more you know about your customers, the better you can market to your customers and increasing that increases your conversion rate as well. Catchment analysis also helps you to analyze competitor locations, learn how you perform against your competitors. You can develop strategies to better serve your competing customers and even gain their business for yourself. And finally, you can map your customer behavior and mobility patterns, which enables you to create extremely useful catchment maps, helping you perform faster, more effective catchment analysis as well. So there are different factors that influences catchment area size. The size of the business catchment area can be influenced by the format and size of the store or the nature of the service itself. The number of businesses in the location can provide an additional pull for consumers such as shopping, retail outlets and all. Whereas consumers will be prepared to travel over an hour away for a shopping centers in comparison to their local high street or grocery stores. You can identify these kind of different behavior of customers based on what exactly they are looking for. Similarly, if you are looking to purchase high ticket price items such as a new kitchen or a sofa, a customer will often be you know, happy to travel further to visit the more showrooms that are available nearby. So that's why a catchment area store analysis is affected by the kind of format your store operates in and also the nature of service that you provide to your customers. So how to calculate catchment area? So there are different methods, but, but there are largely three methods that can be employed. One is buffer analysis, drive time analysis, and then mobility data analysis. So buffer trade areas are trade areas defined by a distance around the location under analysis. Say like for example, so you have a store X, a retail store X, and you are serving people who are in the vicinity of radius three kilometers. So that's, that's become your kind of you know, buffer trade area. Second is walk or drive time trade areas. Trade areas defined by the walk or drive time to the location under analysis. The amount of time taken by consumers to reach. So maybe you want to serve all the customers which are you know located across maybe 15 kind of minutes or half an hour across the particular geographic region. Coming to the third method that is mobility trade areas. These are the areas defined by the mobility patterns of the location and the analysis. And all these things makes you, it's possible for you to pairing point of interest and mobility pattern data so that you can append to your store and see from where, which area your customers are coming from. So how to perform a buffer analysis, the first method. So what this is, so buffer trade analysis involves creating a buffer zone by distance, as I said, around your store locations, indicating the area for analysis. GIS and BI tools such as Carto, Isri, Chavalu, Domo. So these are the tools that facilitate this type of analysis and making it easy for you to define buffer trade areas for your store locations. Why you need this for a catchment analysis? So buffer trade areas are a simple way of determining where your customers are coming from. So that's the simplest way to know where your customers are exactly located are. And initiating this analysis based on entirely a distance from your store location, these buffer zones are the most basic form of catchment area analysis. Now you want to go st one step ahead. You talk about walk time or drive time analysis. So drive and walk time catchment analysis involves analyzing trade areas based on the travel time it takes to get to the store location by either walking or driving. Business intelligence and GIS solutions enable analysis by turning raw data into visualization that are easy to interpret and gain insights from. Why you need this for a catchment analysis? Drive time and walk time trade area analysis are extremely important for understanding how easy it is for your customer to get to your store. 
So, in buffer analysis, we are talking about how easy to locate your customers from where they are coming. Drive time helps you to analyze how easy for it is for your customers to get to your store first. This paints a clear picture of how accessible your store is as compared to your competitors. Coming to the third method that is mobility analysis. Mobility catchment area analysis involves analyzing trade areas based on mobility patterns of data. This allows you to see a trade area based on the mobility patterns of customers and potential customers as well in the areas around your businesses. So, why you need this? Mobility trade analysis gives you deeper analytics than a standard buffer analytics, analytics and it shows where people are actually going. It is not about where it will come from. It shows a dynamic real-time insights for your businesses as well. You can also derive demographics data such as age, income, education level and etc. from this type of analysis. All of this gives you a deeper insight to draw, to draw from you know draw form for your decision making process. So, it helps you to make an informed decision about who else is visiting your store from where they are coming to, how easy it is for them to visit your store and how likely they are going to you know travel around your stores and you know visit your store as well. Now, coming to the last tool that we have in our basket is market mapping. What is market mapping? So, market mapping is a method of visualizing your position it's a visualization method. You can either visualize your position or product within a specified market. You create different market segments to measure and benchmark against them. So, it is a positioning map that takes into account the forces in your market such as supply, demand, saturation, etc., and where you fit into that particular kind of you know scenario or map. So, market mapping gives you a complete picture of your competitive landscape including customer segments, product comparisons as well as market forecasting. So, there are different avenues where we can use market mapping for our benefit. First one is to enter the new market. You have a product and there is a there are market that are existing which are still not served by your sub company or your kind of you know sales operations. So, you can enter those new markets based on the insight that you derive from market mapping. Next benefit when you are launching a new product, right? Again, market mapping helps you to position where you want to position your products where you want to have it along with your competitors. It also gives insights so that you can plan of increasing market share. Again, it will market mapping helps you to strengthen your position in the market vis a vis your competitors. And it is also a tool to evaluate product your products along with your competitors products. So, imagine if you are a starting company or you are starting up a new company, you want to create your go to market strategy or let us say you are an existing company who wants to defend the rank against the competition. So, it is important or crucial for you to understand who the strongest player in the market are, who are the strongest players that are currently playing in that particular product category or market. So, how you are going to do the market mapping? So, you are going to position companies on a graph representing level relevant measures such as yearly revenue and reach or even product range and price level as well. So, when you view the various companies on the competitive map, you can detect gaps or weak points in the market that present an opportunity for you. For example, here is the two, com you have to choose two matrices or kind of you know, variables. Let us say traffic share can be high or low and there is a different component that you identified like conversion rate. So, there can be a low conversion rate, there can be a high conversion rate from that particular market and then you can put your competitors on the place like company A, company B, company C, company D and this then based on your strategic objectives or your selling objectives, you can identify where you want to grow right or where your current product lies, whether your company is in a section where you have a high traffic share as well as there is a high conversion rate which are the companies present there. If you, comp you, if you have that strength and opportunities within you to tackle on those particular competitor B which is uh, already operating in this sector where there is a high traffic share and high conversion rate, that is okay. Then you can take a call and then you can go ahead and you know straight away introduce your products into this kind of you know segment and compete directly with company B. 
So, based on what resources an organization has, even in terms of having a best salesperson can be one strength, then you can take on a, you can take on a call to see where, whether you want to take on which competitor in which segment. Now, mapping products. Market mapping can also involve mapping products. So, remember like you know you want to launch a new product. So, then you need to figure out the best way to introduce it to the market. And if you think it is time to innovate, then you are required to identify the needs to present your audience with something new. So, it, the crucial decision here is to determine how different products are positioned in terms of features, quality and price. So, we call this as a positioning, right? brand positioning, where the particular brand enjoys what position in consumer's mind. So, that is a crucial decision to know ahead. So, how you can do this? You can plot products on a graph with product related parameters. So, you here now in this example, we have taken two product parameters like quality, it can be high, it can be low and then we have price, it can be low price, it can be high price, that is two parameters of the same quality. And then you identify where are the existing products which are available in that market, where are they lying. So, whether product 1 and 2 is you know kind of playing in this segment where there is a high quality, but they are offering low at low prices. And there is another segment high price again providing high quality products this segment. And then you can choose that ok, I am going I am going ahead with this segment to target this particular kind of you know customer base. And there is a third way of applying market mapping where you are mapping the audience itself. So, another type of market planning uh, market mapping this is where you are focusing on your customers, right. So, customer is kind of in a unit that you are focusing on. For example, an e-commerce marketer may focus on the frequency of purchases or website demographics such as age, gender, location to map their audiences. Like you know someone who is frequently visiting a website again and again and someone who is like you know once in a week or once in a month. So, you can kind of you know map those audience on different kind of you know parameters. And you will create a map to identify which type of people are your best customers. This lets you target the prospect with the highest potential of buying from you. And this is kind of a marketing uh, market mapping cycle runs around. It is a cyclic process. How to do go ahead with this? Like we first define the market, right? We set parameters on location, audience and competitors. So, exactly what kind of parameters you want to kind of you know define the particular market into. Then identify USPs that is unique selling propositions. So, determine the perceived value of specific product that is the second stage. Once you know the kind of USPs that are there available in that particular market, you can go ahead and plot your graph. So, you can use clusters to identify less competitive areas and those to optimize as well. And then ultimately you will identify market shifts like you know you create periodic market maps and compare them over time to identify new patterns and trends. So, it is a cyclic process of market mapping that helps business organizations and even sales units or departments as well to kind of you know map their audience, map their products or even map their customers accordingly. So, market mapping is a data driven market research strategy that takes out the guesswork. So, you are just not relying on your instinct and gut feeling and allows you to strategically position yourself in the market vis-a-vis -vis your competitors. So, that comes to an end of this concept where we are we looked at various different tools to be used for crafting a strategic sales plan. Thank you.